Low, trying to spoon it out the back. Finds David Grant, he snaps a goal. This is going to be close. Is it there? It is there. Well, a good tuck there from Stuart Low, and Grant taking full advantage of that and kicking with the aid of that breeze. The ball just carrying sufficiently far enough through that goal mouth. Greg Eppleston unable to touch that as it went through. And David Grant moving down to that forward line. Daryl Borlock's also moved Nicky Widmar into the centre. And he's taken... Uh, oh, sorry, big pardon. He's put Dean Rice onto that half-back line. And he's taken the place of Kane Taylor. So, badly needed goal for the Saints in the uh, first six minutes of this third term. Terry Wallace gets the ball out of the centre for Fitzgerald. Jeff Cunningham, kick off the ground, wide to the half-forward flank, out of sight. Daniels and Foster overrun it. Jeff Cunningham showing tremendous desperation. Winmar's onto the football with long sleeves. Good to see Nicky Winmar kick the ball up towards half-forward. Tap over by Lowe. Kick off the ground by Ingledon. The Saints are spirited. Up towards the full forward area. Cook Amelis goes for goal and puts it through. Well, you're right, Ian. The Saints are spirited. Some of their more senior players showing the way. Firstly, Jeff Cunningham in that back line. Very, very desperate. Winmar breaking away, kicking the ball long. Ingledon, who's been very busy on the half forward line, giving him some, some spark there. And Spiro Corpomilis finishing off very well. Footscray would certainly be very keen to do well in this game this time last year. With a similar record, they went on and won five out of the next six games. At the same time, St Kilda only won one out of their next 12. So the St Kilda chant has gone up as they start to close the gap. Grant in there battling once again. But well, it's another ball up. Atkins there also for Footscray. Still in the middle. Wine harding up a fraction too early. Royal a hurried kick out of the centre. It's pushed wide. The Saints get the next one now. This crowd will come alive. Hawkins spooning it out to Atkins. He really does show his skills in, in the wet. There's a good mark taken by Daniels, who's been busy all day. Kicks up towards centre wing. Dwyer can't get into it at the moment. Campbell loses it. It's socket off the ground. Back towards the centre. Terry Wallace. Tumbles one towards Kolyanov. Back again towards Campbell. A short left foot kick. Cunningham has been inspirational in this quarter. He's done some fine work as he finds Nathan Burke. Kicks lose off the side of the boot. Harding goes through for the Saints. Socket wide. Play allowed to go on. Hawkins uses the body. Clever play by Elphinstone. Did it beautifully. The Saints down to their 50 metre line. Who's waiting down in front? Whitney is there for Footscray. Gets the hand pass away. Here's a chance now for Wallace. A short kick wide towards the boundary line. But Burke is there for the Saints. Shrugs one tackle and gets beautifully claimed on the second. Play allowed to go on. Rice is clear. Into the 50 metre line he goes once again. Looking for low. Tries to tunnel it out. Whitney there for Footscray. Gets the hand pass across to Wallace. And Wallace will steady down with a kick wide towards Hawkins and Burke. Close to the line. And eventually over. But a dramatic passage of play in the last two or three minutes. And Footscray all of a sudden feeling the pressure and the screws being tightened a little by St Kilda who are desperately trying to get back into this game. Wine gets the tap out towards Royal. He can't break clear. Young Nathan Burke picking himself up. Covered in mud. Brian Royal in the picture. Wine and Lowe. Lowe gets the tap out. Hawkins over the top of it. He's been pushed in the back. And Hawkins will take the free kick for Footscray. Maybe just slightly favouring his left leg. Short pass by Hawkins. Goes through. All the players. Here's a chance now for Kolyanuk. Breaks the tackle. Left foot kick is high. Covers 25 to 30 metres. And there's a good mark taken by David Grant. And Grant for St Kilda. Quite a skillful player. His torpedo punt kick, 50 metres, up towards the centre of VFL Park. Now a chance for Fode. He's bumped off the ball by Royal, and Royal gathers it. He's held when he didn't have it. Play on, says the umpire. Russo's caught with the ball. He can't break clear of the hunter tackle, and the umpire will come in and ball it up. Umpire Phil O'Reilly with the more experienced umpire John Russo officiating this afternoon. High over the top, Harding. 
Hunter, who's done pretty well for Footscray, breaks clear, kicks the ball towards half forward, nearly the mark there to the Footscray player, Collins. Collinuke going after it. Here's Foster. Free kick, kick being picked out of it. It's going to St Kilda. And it's going back to Dean Rice, who spent most of the first half on the interchange bench. Rice's kick, a little awkward, falls in the arms of Russo. Russo's kick towards the wing, and there's a good mark taken for Footscray by Eppleston over Elphinstone. Don't say that in a hurry. <laughs> Eppleston towards centre wing, or Foster tried to flick it over the back to find Royal, was successful. Still between half forward and centre wing. Well, a free kick for a push, but it's very difficult when you're sliding like that, but Kolyanuk has the chance to put the dogs into attack again. Goes inside 50, kick will drop short, and the mark taken by Hardy. Looking to clear for the Saints. Not a good kick. McGuinness again. Tony McGuinness, a chance to go deep into attack. Get onto that left foot. The drop punt is high. Is anyone waiting down? A good mark taken by David Grant at the front of the pack. Very difficult to take in these conditions, and he did it well. Grant clears with a sweeping kick towards the halfback flank. Terry Wallace just puts his body in and shovels it forward once again. But here's a chance for Fode. Goes short in towards the centre. Coming beat it was Elphinstone. Needs someone going past. There's a chance now for Dwyer. Mickey Dwyer sending St Kilda down the half forward. And the mark is taken by Stuart Lowe. One out in the square, he's going short, the lead is on. No mark taken. At the back is Ingleton. Maloney desperate, suck it off the ground and going right across the face, registering one behind as Rodney Owen came steaming in. 4-8 to Footscray 7-4. And Rodney Owen has kicked one goal three. Luck of the draw there. Owen's kick off the ground goes through for behind. Collins, on the other hand, has kicked four goals for Footscray, all of them off the ground. Terry Wallace's kick from half back gathers about 25 or 30 metres for his side. That's experience, isn't it, the way he did that? Certainly, a lot of his kicks have been that way, haven't they, Ross? Yes, have, yes. Very effective player, Terry Wallace, this afternoon. Not very pretty, but certainly effective. Harding and Wine. Wine gets the punch and goes straight back over the boundary line. And good wasted time for Footscray. They're kicking to the, uh, what we would think is the non-scoring end. Certainly Footscray did well in the second term, kicking to the main scoreboard end. They kicked four goals, three. Wind again gets the tap out. Hunter over the top of the football, just gets his foot to the ball. Harding gets it off to Russo. Russo's left foot kick to within 50 metres. Wigney dropping back. Maloney there to help him out. Maloney will take it over and we'll have another boundary throw in. Footscray defence so far standing up. And there's a legend, Captain Blood, Jack Dyer. Been around the scene for a while. 11 and a half minutes left in the third term. Wind low over the top, brilliant tap out. Kick off the ground by Dwyer. He'll have another go at it, he can't pick it up. Harrington kicks it off the ground. McGuinness is a chance now. He gets past Daniels, just gets a little chip kick to Royal. Daniels is in there doing the tackling. Owen, pretty good tackle, and he's rewarded. Tony McGuinness perhaps ducking his head. Yeah, he's trying to get out of trouble there. And a good tackle by Owen, who it looked as if it may have been high, but with the uh, head being ducked by Royal, you see Owen coming from the top. It's well tackled, perhaps high, but Royal had a chance to get rid of the ball and penalised accordingly. So Rod Owen, very, very deep in the pocket. And uh, the angle is difficult, but uh, I would think also the distance could be a bit of a problem. Owen's drop punt kick gets the distance but not the accuracy and it's out of bounds on the full so St Kilda they've had a few tries up forward in the first half of this third term just haven't been able to find the major part of the score board there's another behind we've got just over 10 minutes remaining there's a we haven't seen it today Nicky Winmark Saints fans would dearly love to see him come alive. He's only had four kicks, and that's his first mark for the day. 
from 50 metres, Winmar, long in towards goal, off target, and another behind. He wouldn't have seen rain like this in his whole life, would he, over in Western Australia? No. I saw a bit of it up in Darwin. <laughs> Pretty heavy, 7-4 plays, 4-9, 13 effective scoring shots to 11 as Eppleton goes short to Hunter. Hunter had a great start to the game, he was in everything. This could be dangerous, he's gone short, Daniels tries to get it on towards Lowe who can't handle it, Hogg heads towards the boundary line, Owen is there again, back pedals out of trouble, goes on to the left foot and passes to Alpenstein. Well what a spirited fight back here by St Kilda. And should they goal here, the scene will be set for a great struggle in the final quarter. 13 points the difference at the moment. Elphinstone from 40 metres shoots towards goal. He's put it through and the Saints are coming back. So, what's with the Lyland brothers? Put them to the wagon. The Jackaroo is around the same price. With everything. Fuel injection, power steering, automatic if you want it. Well, what are you going to do with the four-wheel drive? Kakadu, Fraser Island. Give you a drive? Yeah, wouldn't mind. You're looking sharp, you're looking good. You've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son. Gillette Contour Plus with lubricating strip for the best a man can get. Enter the Gillette Best a Man Can Get competition. Win one of ten superb Amiga Seamaster watches worth $1,500. Entry forms where you buy Contour Plus. What's it say? Earn 16.5% per annum. Pick the term that suits you from three to six months. And there's no tax due on your interest till 1990. Of course. Earn 16.5% per annum at Resi Statewide. Pack in Ever Ready Black Batteries. Oh, real long life. Pack the black. Pack the black. Ever Ready Black. Packed full of life. Real long life. You know how it is. It's a bit wet over there. A bit wet over here, too. Let me get some drinks. No, let me. Wait up. Drinks all around. Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. Sorry. Now, Footscray out of the centre through Terry Wallace. They've had trouble scoring in this third term. It's at half forward. Colin Uke. Kick off the ground by Colin Uke. Up towards full forward. Now the battle on. Fobes kick. Campbell in there for Footscray. Georgiatis a kick off the ground. Campbell again. The fight on there with Frawley. The ball gun runs free. But the umpire very quickly on the scene. And he will ball it up only 20 metres from the Footscray goal. Bulldogs clinging on. They, really, they haven't added to their half-time score. St Kilda doing well. Bowie comes clear. Kicks it long towards the wing. Wallace, Terry Wallace can't mark. Winmar is in the play. Free kick being picked out of it. Play on. Winmar kicks it into St Kilda's forward half. Great mark by Lowe. Lowe plays on. Kicks it out wide. Looking for Owen. He overruns it. Harrington there for Footscray. Kick off the ground by that player. Owen does the shepherding. Dwyer. Beautiful pick up by Dwyer. Kick around the corner towards Lowe. He can't mark. Footscray defenders now working overtime. Steve Wallace gets the hand pass out to Harrington. Harrington runs outside the 50 metre line and kicks it towards the wing. No mark taken. Keeping his footing there is Grant. Grant runs around onto the right foot. 
kicks the ball towards centre half forward. Elphinstone tries to flip it on. Doug Hawkins composed. He'll be caught. He is caught. Brought down by Lowe, oh. but he was tripped. Says the umpire. Push. Said got, the umpire. It's got to be play on. And Hawkins a little fortunate. Gets the free kick and kicks it wide and finds Wigney. Stuart Wigney past Corgamelis. Going in towards centre wing. And the mark taken by Matthew Hanabry, who's had a long stint on the bench, but now finds himself on the ground at a very crucial stage of the game as Wine marks. Just on seven minutes remaining of this third quarter, and St Kilda well and truly back in the game. The ball on centre wing, that is over the line. Oh, blow me down. It didn't go over, and the fans cannot believe it. Russo keeps it in. Rice under pressure, gives it to Burke. Kicks long. Elphinstone and Eppleston. Foster. Clear for Footscray. Back to the centre again. Daniels can't mark. Harding has a player going past. Cunningham, if he can pick it up. McGuinness is on his hammer. Oh, play by Cunningham. That is desperation. And the free kick. Jury Ward for great effort. Tremendous stuff. Cunningham to half forward. Winmar is coming into the game. Oh, they've lifted up, lifted their workload, haven't they? Certainly have. And now Rod Owen, who's had a big quarter, has a chance to really bring some builder back. And their senior players really are showing the way in this quarter. The catalyst has been Jeff Cunningham. Owen who has kicked one goal three but it's still a fair way out with this wet ball the kick from probably 45 the drop punt is on its way oh he's kicked it what a goal and a crucial one for St Kilda two goals three to Rod Owen and he really has worked hard down there Ian it's very skillful Ross I keep coming back to what you said before the game and we mentioned about desperation but you also said the skill is very important. Yes, Winmar and uh, Owen in that uh, forward line, Winmar in the centre particularly, their skill in putting ball to position is crucial. Now the Saint fans got something to be excited about. Difference just one point. We've got a real battle on our hands now. The kick comes out to Atkins, off to Terry Wallace. Terry Wallace up towards centre half forward. Now a little bit of good fortune for Footscray. Collins will kick his fifth. It's certainly a goal. The field umpire just giving the goal umpire all clear. And I'm sure Mick Malthouse will breathe a sigh of relief there. Darren Collins, his fifth goal, as you said, Ian. What an opportunist. He's only needed uh, five or six kicks to kick those goals. He's not done much else. Next time you change your oil, trade up to BP Visco 2000. Because a change of oil could change your image. Enter the BP Visco 2000 competition. See a participating BP service station now, and you could win a great new Nissan Exa. Hey, a Nissan Exa! <laughs> BP, on the move. Attention thrill seekers everywhere. The USA Monster Truck Challenge is on, and it stars the granddaddy of them all, Bigfoot. 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 We're going to turn the tennis center into a mud pit, then turn loose the big boys with the big toys. Two hours of flame throwing, gear shattering, ball bearing, tearing, mud dragster action. The world's most powerful vehicles unleashing a total of 50,000 horsepower. Can you miss so much wheel standing, ground pounding, throbbing action? The greatest show on dirt, Bigfoot and the Monster Trucks. Book now. At the Melbourne Big, we believe there are better ways to do things. We leave listings open for months longer to make the most up-to-date buying guide available. We keep in touch with our customers to stop dead listings. We combine classifications and use bigger print to make the book easier to use. We didn't have to be Einstein's to know how to list all Melbourne's businesses in one volume. We might not look big, but when it comes to big thinking, we outweigh the heavyweight every time. The Melbourne Big. We're too smart to be thick. I tell you what, mate, the 
Sure beats the hell out of that hack you had working for you. <laughs> Cheaper, too. Carries a ton. Most powerful in its class. You know, at 83 bucks a week, why isn't everyone after one? They are, mate. They are. New Holden Rodeo. At a once only $83 a week, it's cheap labour, but definitely only a... Seven almost looked a match winner in the conditions, but a great fight back by the Saints in the third quarter, kicking four goals to one, brought them right back into the game, a kick the difference at three-quarter time. So it was up for grabs in the last quarter at VFL Park, and we pick up the final term at the opening bounce. The margin is six points as we go into the final quarter here at VFL Park. Footscray kicking with the breeze that Ross Glendinning estimates at around two or three goals. Hogg tries to go forward. Wine seems to be in pain for the Bulldogs after that uh, centre knockout. Daniels clear for St Kilda. This could be a start and a half. His kick wobbles along the forward line. A free kick to Rodney Allen as Wine is in the hands of the trainers. And Jason Daniels there has had a very difficult job on Tony McGuinness. He's picked up a lot of possessions himself. But in that third quarter particularly, he was able to nullify the effectiveness of McGuinness. And he was the one who was instrumental in getting that ball out of the centre for St Kilda. This to level the scores. Rod Owen has two goals. He kicked one in the second and one in the third quarter. This is perhaps the most important of them all. Oh, look at the wind pull that ball up. No one will mark it. Can anyone take it away? Elphinstone snaps. Elphinstone goals. Well, Robbie Elphinstone had moved into that forward line in the third quarter, kicked a terrific goal from uh, just in front of 50 metres in that third quarter, and then snapping very well in a very busy traffic area there. Had the good sense to steady, knowing that he's under pressure, but he broke clear, controlled the ball, and a terrific snapshot at goal. And he was certainly very happy with that. Well, the wonder, now the scores are level, and it's even more so... Uh, Whichever side gets the little bit of good fortune. Hogg can't get the ball clear. It's been smothered in the centre again by St Kilda. McGuinness tries to break clear. Elphinstone gets the handball towards Bowie. Bowie can't break clear. Hogg, the Footscray player. Epplestone under pressure. Atkins can't get the ball out. And the umpire will be forced to come in and ball it up again. That steady rain in the background has been falling all day. And we had a heavy shower before the game started. So it's been very slippery for the whole match. Wine, Atkins, gets the ball out towards Terry Wallace. Kick off the ground. Lands in the arms of Dwyer. He can't break away. He gets a flip out. The advantage is with Grant. He leaves the ball behind. Tackled by Hunter is good. He could be penalised. Yes. And Mark Hunter, who's had 20-odd possessions on that half-back line for Footscray, will take the free kick. And he doesn't mess around either. He kicks it 50 metres directly towards goal. And there's a great mark by the experienced Foster, who's played pretty well for his side. His kick is wide. In the direction of Collins, chasing is Sheldon. Player coming in to help out Hannaberry. Collins tries to get it back to Hannaberry. He flips it out the back to Campbell. Campbell can't break clear. Now he can. A la Robert Elphinstone. He goes for goal. Up in front of the square, Harding can't mark. Collins is there. Sheldon. Daniels there tackling. Is that around the neck? Gee whiz. Collins on the bottom of the pack. And umpire will come in and ball it up. You're seeing Scott went off the ground in uh, a bit of pain there, and Richard Cousins on for his first run for this game. Did a pretty good job too, Wine, on the ground. Could have almost been a push. Foster tries to soccer off the ground, goes in after it once more. Russo out the back towards Sheldon, and he just farms it over the line. It does give Footscray the lead by one point. 8-5 to 7-10. Let's go down for a report on Wine to uh, Michael Roberts. Mike? Yes, yeah, Scott Wine received a, a boot to the chest or to the stomach in a, in a ruck duel and he's only coming off for five minutes apparently. Hawkins, Taylor, trying to get clear out the back, can't do so. Campbell unable to pick it up and we will see another throw in. I'd still be inclined to leave Richard Cousins on the ground. Fresh legs, perhaps take someone else off. Although, hello, he is coming back off oh. the ground now and Scott Wind going back on. So a very short run for Richard Cousins. Foster jostling with Harding. Harding got a hand to it. Who can take it away? Rice gets it out towards Russo, but the boundary line a little too close. Pressure from Kolyanuk. 
and Cousins just staying a kick behind the play until that ball comes down a bit so he can change with wind throw in again and he might be in the right place at the right time the big man in fact there he is gets it now kicks towards the half forward line taken away by Bowie to Cunningham who did some inspirational work in the third quarter on to Grant he gets claimed back to Daniels under pressure wide to Bowie St Kilda go forward towards Ingledon can't take the mark looks for someone going past Dwyer under pressure Maloney there the ball held and another ball up and Georgiadis is coming off yes not because Cousins will stay on the ground Georgiadis off and it's a point the difference Hogs kick wide Ingledon a chance well done Ben Ingledon oh but good work by Cousins to affect the smother and then soccer it off the ground back towards the centre Taylor leaves it for Elphinstone who shovels it out the back door Dwyer for someone going past his good football slowly but surely St Kilda surge it down to their 50 metre line now the pressure on the Bulldog defence tremendous race for the ball with Rice leading out now Dwyer a sweeping hand pass towards Grant gets it out but no one there for the Saints and Atkins comes away kicks up towards centre wing and a good mark taken for the Dogs by Hannibal. He goes to the half-forward line. Collins soccer's off the ground. Now he's kicked five. Still going it into the pocket. And another throw. Well, Darren Collins, one goal in the first quarter, three in the second, and one in the third. Five out of eight. Well, if the Bulldogs happen to uh, pinch this match, certainly they can thank the soccer tactics of the little forward pocket player, Darren Collins. It's in Footscray's left forward pocket, and it's going to go right down to the line. There'll be some tired players out there. Wine gets the tap out. Winmar gathers in the back pocket and kicks the Saints out of trouble. Daniels, who's done pretty well on the experienced McGuinness, the ball comes out the back. Hunter, who's done very well for Footscray, left foot kick by Hunter up towards centre half forward. No mark. Harding strives hard. Handball out by Hannaberry. Foster shoots for goal. It's there. I don't know, John. Have a look at this. Car's got a whole computer system that actually tells you what's wrong with it. And those backyard boys, I think it's just a question of changing a couple of these, I don't know. Unbelievable. Yeah, you better look at the distributor cap. Could be cracked. It's probably non-genuine too. Yeah, doing that. Commodore's all finished. Have a listen to this. Love it. The lubricating strip. Any improvement? We're still getting drag. It needs to be smoother. And chemical residue? It's still messy. We have to stop the strip from wearing. <sighs> or invent a new strip. Jim? They've beaten us to it. Wilkinson Sword? Yeah. Aquaglide. The world's smoothest shave. But it's not as fast as your posh brand. Oh, how quaint. An Australian car. <laughs> Watch this. Isn't that annoying? Where's your big M, though? I don't know. It must have left it somewhere. Near the gateway to one of the world's most famous harbours is one of the world's most famous fish restaurants, Doyle's. Here they serve only the freshest fish and seafood. But whether you pick the finest John Dory, a succulent charcoal grilled lobster, or the legendary seafood platter, make sure you have plenty of time and your visa card, because you can't rush eating at Doyle's and you can't pay with American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. 
There's a new man at the top of the foundation, but his new methods and covert activities leave MacGyver and Nikki on a quest to clear Pete's name. MacGyver, tonight. It's now a matter of survival for the Magpies as they face a danger game against the Eagles. See the feathers fly 2 o'clock Sunday on 7. Here's the Tats 2 results, just drawn under government supervision. Seven points the difference. Footscray kicking with the breeze. They have it in their attacking zone at the moment, but Sheldon holding up yet another bulldog attack. Wide, or oh, kick drop straight onto the chest of Doug Hawkins. Played a pretty good game too, Hawkins. Yes, he has. Short, that's a good kick. The mark not taken. The pass was a beauty. Atkins leaves it for Cousins. Big fresh man on the ground. He pumps one in towards goal, but it's one behind only. So now I'm surprised that Mick Malthouse is, uh, when he took Brian Roar off the ground, unless he's injured, why he's left him off for so long, I'd certainly bring him back onto the ground and give that little bit of experience and help steady Fusco down. Eight points in it. Danny Frawley. Which way will he go? Members side. Ball dropping short off. Foster almost claimed the mark. It's been paid, yes. That is going to. Much to the dismay of Jeff Cunningham. So Peter Foster, who's had a pretty good day today. He's uh, taken nine marks and had 16 kicks. He got a couple of bites of the cherry. Would you have paid it, Ross? Uh, in these conditions, uh, for yeah. effort. Yes. He's in front. Well, this is going to make it very hard for St Killer if he kicks this one. The left foot kick is on its way. It's not coming back. It's a behind. Just fighting that last minute there, Sandy. Yep. Indicative of why that breeze is just pushing the ball to this side of the ground. Peter Foster, one goal, two. The so Footscray just edging away from the Saints. St Kilda struggling against the breeze in this last term. Atkins for Footscray. Rice for St Kilda. And there's the time precious time for the Saints because at the start of this last quarter they trailed by only six points Brian Royal and John Georgiades on the bench for the Bulldogs the freshman cousins Colin Uke kicks it over his head and there's a mark as it traveled at the required distance yes and Fode takes it for St Kilda Campbell on the mark Fode's kick holding up Hawkins does the punching kick off the ground by Hunters intelligent play Another kick off the ground by Rice. McGuinness. Daniels, the desperado. Ball comes to the back. Wallace tries to get a kick out. Oh. Hanaberry's pulled off it, didn't have it. Play on, says the umpire. The play now in the centre. Great pick up by Winmar. Dry weather football by Nicky Winmar. And he puts the Saints up towards their 50 metre line. And there's a mark to Ingledon. He plays on quickly. The short chip into the pocket. Punched away from Owen by Harrington. Hog under pressure. The ball in the forward pocket. Maloney tries the tackle on Ingledon, and the umpire will come in and ball it up. Player's pretty tired. And I wonder, St Kilda having played against Richmond here last week, whether that will tell on the young Saints. The ball punched over the line by Cousins, and another boundary throw-in will take place. By the same token, they stormed back in that game, and who knows if they could do it again. Time will tell. Here's the throw in. Over the head of Russo it goes. Burke now with Hawkins. Burke tries to go through his legs and socket off the ground by Hanabry and eventually over the line by Maloney for another throw in. Time ticking away. Just under 11 and a half minutes remaining. from the throwing. Hanabry waits and then soccers it clear. Harding, oh, hammered through and just about clean bowled everyone. Chance now for Eppleston to get clear. Oh, he runs his full distance, goes with the left foot up towards centre wing. Fisted away past Foster. Campbell is there, tries to get it back to Foster. He was almost held, pushed, said the umpire. And Peter Foster 
will take the free kick, although he's allowed the advantage to be paid. Puts pressure on his teammate, Kolyanuk, who flicks it out the back door and eventually flicks it over the line. 9-7 to 7-10, 16 effective scoring shots for Footscray, 17 for the Saints. But the Dogs lead. Cousins and Harding at the back, Cunningham. His hand pass back into the pack. Comes back to him again. Over the top of Dwyer. Whitney goes over the top, could have almost infringed. He has, said the umpire. And so Stuart Lowe. St Kilda have got to go long and direct. Hawkins gets underneath it. Tries to do it with the one hand. Is not successful. Wallace pushed, said the umpire. And Steve Wallace, call in a crisis. And go back and kick Footscray out of trouble. Back to centre wing again. Harding. Collinook an attempted soccer further forward. Cunningham gets it on. Kick came from Dean Rice to centre wing. Hawkins. Foster, Wigney, shrugs the tackle, loses it, but he's got Foster there to help. Bowie tackles him, but he gets his kick. Atkins fell, wasn't pushed as Russo came over the top. Not pretty stuff at the moment, but it's desperate. And that one marked right on the line by Nathan Berg. Oh, the boundary umpire nearly blew his whistle oh. there. <laughs> Sitting in front of, or he's in front of all the St Kilda supporters in this stand. I think he knows the roof might have come off as Wigney kicks it high over centre wing, waiting down in front, doing the roving work is Harding. Short into the centre, slipping at the crucial time was Daniels. Harding again, soccer's clear, it's like a billiard ball this, as it ricochets off players. Hawkins. Tony McGinnis a free kick, and as he went to get up there, the secure player pushed him fair and square in the back. So McGuinness with the free kick for Footscray on centre wing, member side, Bulldogs clinging on. McGuinness's stats pretty impressive. Footscray leading by nine points, just eight and a half minutes left. Wallace just gets his foot to the ball. Colin Uke and Rice, and Rice was infringed against by the Footscray player, so Dean Rice will take the free kick. Poor kick, kicked it a little too quickly, but Winmar's there and he tidies up. The kick now in towards the centre and a good mark taken by Elphinstone. Robert Elphinstone started in defence, has kicked two goals. Creative hand pass to Winmar. Winmar kicks up towards full forward. Kick off the ground by Maloney. Lowe is there. So is Ingledon. Ingledon's caught with the football by that strong Footscray defence. Bowie pushed off it. Cousins leaves it behind. Maloney does it. His left foot kick is quick. Out towards Hawkins. Nathan Burke trying hard. Hawkins in there again. So is Maloney. The tap out comes to Atkins off to Cousins. And Cousins kick up towards the centre of the field. It goes through the back. Sheldon's under pressure. He gets the ball somehow out. And he's infringed against while doing so. And he'll take the free kick. So Kenny Sheldon, 12 kicks and one hand pass. His ball goes over the centre. Low. Dwyer comes in. Takes the mark. Gets Oops. the hand pass away. David Grant now kicks the ball long. Up inside the 50 metre line. But there's a mark to Footscray taken for them by their back pocket player Matthew Hogg and it just relieves that little bit of pressure for the Bulldogs they're striving very very hard Hogg's kick a good one well out of trouble for Footscray on centre wing Cunningham can he control the football he slips over Terry Wallace is there Cunningham's tap on is good Burke takes the football for St Kilda and kicks it towards half forward there's no one home Atkins he can't control it Dwyer McGuinness kick off the ground by Hunter and the mark has been taken by Cunningham he plays on and gives it to Harding Harding's high ball in towards set a half forward no mark taken by Elphinstone he is held by Eppleston and Elphinstone will take the free kick Elphinstone's kick down towards Owen he's claimed gets the hand pass out towards Dwyer Wallace smothers it well McGinnis soccer's off the ground it goes wide towards the boundary line chasing Maloney but Owen with strength gets it back again to Ingleton Ben Ingleton needs support. He's got it in Corkamelis. This could close the gap. He shoots in towards goal and he's off target, one behind. Well, that's oh. the goal they wanted, Sandy, and they really did work very hard to get that. Some great play by the St Kilda players there. Tremendous struggle, this. Not pretty all the time, but a great battle. Hawkins 
to the outer side. The diving mark is not taken, and with just over six minutes remaining, Greg Eppleston picks himself up. And Captain Blood, Jack Dyer, almost getting excited. Low and Cousins. Cousins with the right hand. McGuinness gets it down. Elphinstone, a short kick. Eppleston under pressure. He's gone out of bounds on the full. Here's another chance for St Kilda now to bring it forward. Some 35 metres out. Robbie Elphinstone tried to kick the cover off it. Slewed off and a good mark taken by Matthew Hogg. It's his second solid mark in, uh, in his many minutes, Andy. Very good mark. Looking for Hawkins, who made position well. That could have almost been 50 metres. Short to Wigney. Wigney goes long. Well over centre wing and a great diving attempt by Ken Sheldon will be rewarded. We've got just under five minutes left. Still time for St Kilda. If they're good enough, the Bulldogs, on the other hand, are hanging on grimly. After really scooting away with this game early on in the first half. The ball centre field. A chance for Cousins, who's been pretty lively since coming on. He gets it across to McGuinness. McGuinness a long kick over the head of Sheldon. Collins is there. So too is Fode for St Kilda. Gordon Fode's hand pass puts Sheldon under pressure. Fode comes in to make amends, steaming through the mud. He kicks it to centre wing and straight to Hawkins, who's had a big day on this wing. 18 kicks to his credit. There's another one. Down to the left half forward flank. No one able to pull it in. Cunningham at the bottom of the pack, farming it out to Russo. Threads his way through, then gets the hand pass on to Harding. Going nowhere fast. Harding again. Wallace waiting. Now goes in, tries to bring it out. David Grant there also. There are some tired players in that lot. You just sense that Secura just can't quite break free enough to score. Eight points the margin. Cousins with a roundhouse right. But straight to Rice. Across to Elphinstone and Eppleston. The latter taken out of it. Elphinstone does well. His hand pass. It won't bounce up for Rice. He'll have to go and get it. He does. McGuinness props while it comes down. Gets a hurried kick. Up to half forward once again. The Bulldog defence doing really well. Now Foster soccering it forward. They've got it almost to their 50 metre line. Foster will swing round onto the left foot. Pulls it back in towards full forward. Which way will it bounce? A chance for St Kilda again to steady through Foe. Oh, the kick's a shocker. Straight to Foster and he'll pump it back again. This time long, in towards full forward. It bounces across the face of goal and through for one behind. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1989 Premiership season. Footscray hung on to win by eight points after that big lead at half-time. St Kilda valiant in defeat, but just couldn't get up there in the end. Collins kicked five for Footscray, Owen kicked two for St Kilda and a crowd of just over 17,000 at VFL Park to witness the match in the wet. After the break, we'll be back with Scott Palmer, who has all the update news on the war in Sydney last night between Carlton and the Sydney Swans. So, what's with the Lyland brothers? What happened to the wagon? The jackaroo is around the same price. With everything. Fuel injection, power steering, automatic if you want it. But what are you going to do with the four-wheel drive? Kakadu. Fraser Island. Give you a drive? Yeah, wouldn't mind. Um, next time you change your oil, trade up to BP Visco 2000. Because a change of oil could change your image. Enter the BP Visco 2000 competition. See a participating BP service station now, and you could win a great new Nissan Exa. Hey, a Nissan XR. <laughs> BP, on the move. If you put your money in a bank or a building society, the security is high, but, well, the interest is, you know. If you put your money in stocks and shares, the return would be pretty high, but the security is low. 
But why stick your neck out? Because if you put your money in an estate mortgage trust, the interest is high and the security is high too. So, uh, what are you waiting for? Estate mortgage. It's not a bank or a building society. It's even better. Anything worth achieving takes time. <laughs> like quitting. Many smokers try to quit a few times before they finally succeed. But that's okay. With each try, you'll learn something new. So every time you give up, you're closer to giving it away completely. For tips on how to quit smoking, <coughs> call the quit line now. Double one five three eight. Inspection! It's five minutes! The sergeant major is a tough judge of appearance, but his men have an advantage. The new chic advantage. The handle is ergonomically designed. The micro head, fixed or pivoting, shaves tight spots easily. One push, it's clean. For a uniformly clean shave. Haven't we forgotten something? Get the chic advantage. Was it murder or an accident? A wife's suspicions are aroused. There is a poison that can't be traced, isn't there? Is her husband trying to kill her? Suspicion tonight. In Home and Away... Alf and Tom have gone missing. A small boat trapped in a violent storm. But they were heading out to open sea. There's no way for them to take shelter. The uncertain fear and terrible waiting for missing loved ones. I don't know what I'd do if I lost Alf. You're talking in the past tense as if he was gone already. Monday at 6 on 7. Welcome back to Saturday Night Replay. Well, it was wet and wintry today in Melbourne, but what a game it was in Sydney last night, and I don't think we've heard the end of it yet. Scott Palmer in the offices of the Sunday Press, and Scotty, uh, the tribunal tomorrow, but I think we might hear a little bit more about this one. I think you might hear a lot. Uh, yes, the uh, aftermath is still bubbling along up there. I've spoken to uh, Greg Williams today, and uh, he informs me he's got a uh, fracture of the uh, shoulder blade and will miss about for four to six weeks, Drew. And of course, back here in Melbourne, David Reese jones has returned home. He's got two fractures of the jaw and he'll have x-rays taken again on Monday to determine whether they should be wired or not. Well, the tribunal tomorrow morning might look like a casualty ward. Yes, well, I know that Carlton officials are very upset about what happened and they're just hoping now that the VFL Commission will be sort of uh, have a deep look at that uh, video on Monday or Tuesday and come up with the right answers. Yes, I can perhaps see that they might be a little bit incensed. I wonder whether they might hurry it up and have it uh, tomorrow because Greg Williams might have to make two trips back to Melbourne. I'd like to think so, but I tried to check with league officials today. Uh, Ross Oakley's up there in Sydney and he'll be there for the weekend. And Alan Schwab is down there at the second division carnival in Hobart. Um, it's unlikely they'll get back in time to uh, have a look at it tomorrow, perhaps early Monday, although the big matches are on Monday. That's right. And uh, we had those injuries last night, but a lot more today as well. Yes, yeah, some nasty injuries today. Uh, North Melbourne's Alistair Clarkson broke his hand and he'll miss six weeks. Uh, Brisbane Bear Roger Merritt hopes his forearm isn't broken today after a nasty accident in the third quarter. And St Kilda's Trevor Barker received a kick in the mouth today. A real heavy boot hit him in the mouth. He's got concussion and badly lacerated lips. He won't be doing any kissing at the discos tonight. <laughs> Well, Scotty, I thought today's football was as wet as I'd seen since 1977. I remember that game at Arden Street when Malcolm Blight had a second kick for goal and lost the game against Hawthorne. But I believe that John Kennedy thought today's football should have been called off. In hindsight, he said that should have been the case. He said he's never seen it worse. The last uh, time he can remember playing in uh, such atrocious conditions was way back in the old Brunswick Street Oval. Only John Kennedy could remember that, of course. <laughs> but he said today's game reminded him of a soccer match. He said, and we had more players on the ball, kicking the ball along the ground. And uh, Fitzroy have got their lowest score today since 1953. What did Rod Austin reckon? Well, he said, look, everyone says we're skilled and we're a talented team, but he said, it's no use being skilled and talented if you can't get the ball. He said, that's the main uh, attribute of uh, football these days. Leon Wigard, the president of Fitzroy, he got up into the rooms and spoke to the players for the first time today and really laid down the law to them. But uh, I think they've let their finals hope slip a bit. You and I at the MCG today, what did they say, the, very, the coaches Bartlett and Peter Knights? Kevin uh, praised his team, he said terrific courage and of course some of the boys there who haven't had too many wins will benefit in the pay packet tonight because some of them only get paid when they have a big win so they might be a few grand better off tonight. It's good, good to see the Tigers get up. Of course Peter Knight said the Bears, he said they rested on their laurels after Brad Hardy kicked those three goals. They tried to save the match instead of attacking and trying to win it. Well, Scott, I saw something at the MCG I don't think I've ever seen before. Neville Crowe, the Richmond president, got on the ground after the game and actually kissed Alan McKellar right on the chops. 
I know his wife will be a bit suspicious about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what about uh, Daryl Balder? Well, Daryl Baldock, he said, maybe we missed uh, Tony Lockett today. He said, uh, if he had been there, we might have had something to shoot to. But he said, our boys uh, didn't uh, adjust to the conditions at all. They're very upset about uh, Trevor Barker. He's uh, lying on the table out there, concussed tonight. They said, the, you know, uh, indiscriminate kicking shouldn't be allowed. And I feel that that's the case too, uh, Drew. Good on you, Scott. Well, we look forward to seeing you in here tomorrow morning and look forward to the uh, Sunday press coming out tomorrow. Good on you, mate. Scott Palmer, the sporting editor. We'll be back after a short break with the action today from the MCG. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. We know how to make the most of who we Contour Plus with lubricating strip for the best a man can get. We promise, we absolutely promise that what you're going to get is itchy feet. It's the holiday and travel show at the exhibition buildings. Hundreds of exhibitors from Australia and overseas with thousands of holiday ideas and destinations. 50% bigger than last year. Lots of advice from people who know and continuous world on parade entertainment. You could even win the grand Asian holiday flying Qantas business class. See your feet are starting to itch already. Don't miss the holiday and travel show Thursday the 15th to Sunday the 18th. Hello, Richie. Oh, listen, I've been thinking. Business is tough, Richie. Uh, you know what I mean. But if you guys lower the price, we might do something. Sorry, Bob, but we rang Pittsburgh, Houston, Washington, Detroit, and we sold a lot. So you guys learn to do business on the phone, huh? Well, what about me, huh? What about me? No one's far from anyone anymore. OTC. Why didn't you call? <laughs> Moving the troops effectively takes skill and experience. Doing it economically takes mission know-how. During his winter campaign, the Nissan dealer is under orders to move out the Nissan Pathfinder, Nissan's four-wheel drive freedom machine, from $23,990 and clear stocks of the roomy eight-seater Nissan Nomad. That's Nissan know-how. That's a magnificent offer. They're back, and Hitler's not very happy. Telly Savalas, Ernest Borgnine in Dirty Dozen 4, The Fatal Mission, TV premiere Sunday. Next on Hinch. Kids and the crimes they commit. Car theft, assault, robbery, arson and drugs. They're committing the crime but not doing the time. The whole of this system is utterly off the rails. Young, free and dangerous to know. Next on Hinch. At the MCG today, uh, Richmond were trying to uh, get their first win in a month and the Brisbane Bears were trying to prove that last week was no fluke when, with the last kick of the day, they beat Carlton. It was interesting to note that Richmond, the only team in the competition who hadn't beaten the Brisbane Bears, in four previous meetings, the Bears had won every time. And I might add, by an average margin of about six goals. So they had plenty to prove today, Kevin Bartlett's boys, in the mud heap at the MCG. Let's firstly go down there and take a look at the highlights of the first two quarters. It is a former Essendon player. He and uh, Lester Smith look very alike. Beautifully shuffled out there to Michael Richardson. Touches it once on the ground. Then again, racing into goal. He's 40. Oh, he ran a mile. 45 metres out. Kicks it. Hardy, too clever. He will go well under these conditions, Bernie. Hardy, nine goals against Carlton last week. He might come out to the right and open up the goals slightly. No, he runs in directly and kicks. And Brad Hardy has goal already away to Gibson running through the centre. Bears looking good. Gibson out in front of Kappa. Boy, almost took the mark. Gets the hand pass away. Williams. Open forward line here. Hardy has a break on them and Brad Hardy will get his second. 
is cut off by Waitman. Hunter with her head first touch. Chance for Hardy still. Umpire didn't pay Waitman's mark. Picked up by McKellar. And McKellar pulled off his kick by Richardson. Ball still in. Williams back to Hardy for number three. And I think he's kicked it. He has. The player at centre half back, Des Ryan, to take the chest mark. Puts it out to centre wing. Oh, what a climb on a mark by Frank Garlis. Frank Garlis. Now it's Matthew Knights. He's tackled. Quick kick is by Michael Pickering off the side of the boot as players dive in after it. Here's um, Trevor Poole shoots. And is that their first? It is. Trevor Poole getting Richmond's first goal just before half time. The Bears had three on the board in the first quarter, all to Brad Hardy, but the margin had gone from 16 points back to nine points at half time. That was the margin at the long break. Before we pick up the action in the third quarter, we've just heard that the tribunal won't be held tomorrow morning at the request of Carlton officials. They have deferred it to Tuesday night because of the condition of David Rees-Jones with his broken jaw. So the tribunal this week will be on Tuesday night after the completion of the split round. OK, back to the MCG and we pick it up. Nine point lead as the Brisbane Bears going into the second half. Here's the opening bounce of the uh, second half. Looks like the umpires might come out in fresh gear as well to start this second half. A nine-point lead to the Brisbane Bears. The Tigers all in new kits and a couple of the Brisbane Bears. That won't last long and we'll start with another throw up again in the middle. Three goals for the Bears. All three goals kicked by Hardy in the first quarter. 1-7 Richmond. And the umpire will have to come in again. It cool off pretty remarkably at halftime. It'd come up start again the second half wouldn't it wouldn't be easy at all mark mcleod is the youngster there number 39 and his first league game it's socket off the ground first goal in this quarter is very very important booted off the ground again lester smith's in there after it a quick kick comes out towards uh, center wing this is chris pym he's attacked by two brisbane bears that was summers getting it down towards half forward Williams now here's Mark Williams again he's playing a great game the danger man Hardy waits at the back he's got it Brad Hardy an open goal kicks and bounces which side the wrong side I think yes oh, he and had Kappa yep Kappa going crook about it too he should have handballed it over I think Drew yeah that would have Bernie. been a give me goal to Warwick Kappa who's standing just about on the end of the 10 meter square and Brad Hardy ignored him yes I agree with that and uh, that probably cost them a goal well, in what looks sure to be a close game, that could be vital. McIver marks the kick in on the 50. Scott McIver round onto the left boot, not a great kick. And the mark taken by Trevor Poole at centre half back. Poole out to centre wing. Awkward for Bauer. McKellar calls him on and does the shepherding. Bauer over the wing. Courage there by O'Keefe. Front of the pack, Lambert. Centering kick. Roberts has been a pretty good player for the Bears. The umpire didn't pay that mark. Comes out to Waitman. Who gained some pace in the uh, moving footing. Waitman again. Puts it out in front of goals, but it's all the Bears. Gee, Campbell took a week. Eventually gets it away. Not out of trouble yet. Luckily to Gastev. Side of the boot job and out of bounds. He's done that well, John Gastev. On about three occasions, he's been able to get the ball across the boundary line. Good defensive play under these very sloppy conditions. Well, this throw-in will take place at the 50-metre line. And a goal to Richmond here really put them right back in the game. Now, how will the umpire interpret that? Most of the day, Bernie, the umpires have said that that is hold, the ball being held to the player, and that's good. I think it's, they've uh, been pretty good, the umpires, today. Well, it's a, there's Gary Frangalis trying to get away with the ball. Quick kick is by Dale Dixon. Waitman loses it. Kicked away by Brenton Phillips off the ground and eventually the ball is over the line. Mark Williams hands it back in gentlemanly fashion. It's about uh, 75 metres around from the Richmond goal as Summers punches it down. There's Frank Garlis, a quick kick to half forward. But it's taken by Michael Richardson. Again now, that's Reigns receiving from his teammate in Matthew Campbell. Oh, Poole went for a fresh air shot. Now here's Bain. Bain to half forward. Charging after it is Ashcroft. Marcus Ashcroft, he's lost it. Mark McLeod, he's lost it also as the kick comes down towards half forward for the Bears. This is Brendan Bauer. 
shuffled out by McIver. The kick comes to Mark Williams, taken away from him. Michael Richardson onto the left, brings it back in front of goal. Now, who's there? Hardy's waiting at the back. He dragged his opponent away from it. A hand pass comes back to Matthew Knights. Lambert. Justin Pickering. Oh, that's good backing up by Richmond. And a beautiful smother as it's kicked away by James towards centre wing and Waitman. Waitman tried to tunnel it. The umpire said he was grabbed when he didn't have it. Justin Pickering wanted to play on with advantage and is going quick at the umpire for not paying advantage and hurls it back at his skipper. Free kick to Waitman. Good distance, 40 metres. 45 maybe to half forward. Merritt. Been a real scrounger today, Roger Merritt. Roberts loses control. Pulled, dragged down by Merritt when he didn't have it. Now advantage is paid. Frangalis goes the short pass. Kicks into Gastev. Chance might have gone begging there. Chance here for Powell. Up into the goal square. Which way will it bounce? It's a goal! Yes, they fought hard for that, Richmond. Put it down on the forward line. And Powell, who's been a busy player, been uh, fighting hard for possessions and probably most of the, one of the most constructive forwards that Richmond have in the side. There's Powell, excellent pickup. And it just bounces nicely for him. There's a, a little bit of a leg break. And uh, finally, Richmond's second goal on the board. The Brisbane Bears now lead by only four points, and that's put a different slant on the game. Here's Trevor Poole coming through the centre. It's off the side of the boot, and the mark has been taken by Gastev. Now the Bears are going to be a bit of on, a bit of under a bit of pressure, I should say, in this quarter. Gastev to the centre of the ground. Richardson's working hard. He's taken a nice mark on the chest. Over to Brenton Phillips. Phillips. To half forward, it's fisted away out towards the half back line. There's Michael Pickering, a quick kick to the centre of the ground. Matthew Knights over to Lambert. They're looking good. The Tigers, the short one. Do they starting to uh, cover a bit more territory with their kicks down that end? That was Gibson shuffling it away. Frank Garlis has got it, looking for a hand pass. He kicks it instead right out towards the pocket, and he's found Little Dale Waitman right out on that boundary line. Now, the distance would be a big doubt here, I would think. It's very wide out there. Waitman leading very wide to the pocket and on a very tight angle. Well, a goal would put Richmond in front. He's had 10 kicks. Let's see if he can make the distance. Dale Waitman, he's hooked it across his body. There's a pack of players there. The mark is dropped. Here's a chance for Wilson. Tries to get boot the ball. Can't do so. The players pounce in on top of it. And the umpire will have to ball that one up. The Richmond supporters didn't think so. They thought it should have been holding the ball. David O'Keefe, last one up. Chance for Richmond going up around the ground. But the knock comes out towards the boundary line and will beat them out of play. Good play by the Bears. Well, I wonder had Brad Hardy hand pass to Kappa and Kappa kicked the goal to stretch the margin whether that would have buried Richmond. And now, just one kick the difference. Well, Powell again, high tackle. It's free. No doubt. Yeah, they shouldn't complain about that one. Good decision by the umpire. Let's have a look again. There it is. The uh, tackle in the first instance was definitely high. Campbell, the offender, and Tony Free with this free kick for Richmond to put the Tigers two points in front. Breeze is favouring Richmond this quarter. Good kick. Different complexion on this match now. Yes, Richmond looking a lot better since uh, quarter time. They have been the better side. And they're starting to get a little bit of run into, their, uh, into the game. Moving on. I don't know, Jono. Have a look at this. Car's got a whole computer system that actually tells you what's wrong with it. And those backyard boys, I think it's just a question of changing a couple of these, I don't know. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, you better look at the distributor cap. Could be cracked. It's probably non-genuine too. Yeah, doing that. Commodore's all finished. Have a listen to this. Love it. It's the early signs you need to look out for. Itchy scalp, hair left on your brush. 
Next thing, it's not nice to talk about, but you notice hair in the bottom of the shower. Then the ultimate insult. Someone says you're going bald. Before you know it, you are. It's no fun either. See how much older I look? Who wants to look years older than they are? Not me. I've found the answer. I'll be back in a minute to tell you about it. Garlic, the plant that is famous for its medicinal properties, and the king has many wonderful stories. Oh, I feel really sick. Sick? Sick? There's no time for sick. A joke! It's my turn to be sick. Come on, move on. Uh, will it never end? 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 Nothing ever ends. I hope the sickness ends. If only there's a, a joke solution. Every problem has a solution, and in your case, it's chaotic garlic. Garlic? Garlic? Pooh! Chionic garlic has no odor. Oh. Oh. To avoid being sick, everyone should have a proper diet. Take Chionic in liquid capsule or tablet form. Oh, good! Chionic is taken orally, not absorbed through the skin. Twinkle, twinkle, little germ, how Chionic makes you squirm. The king of garlic concentrates 50 minerals, sulfur compounds and enzymes into an extract. And that's why I take Chionic every day. You don't need to look years older than you are. There is a solution. It starts with this number. And slowly, strand by strand, you begin to look like the old, I mean, the young you. There is no surgery, no pain, just a proven method of replacing lost hair. It all starts with this number and ends with you leading a full and normal life again. Advanced Hair Studio, world's leading name in hair replacement. Nobody knows Melbourne like seven. Seven nightly news knows Melbourne. When people out there turn their telly on, they expect the best possible news reports. There's more to sport than just the scores. There's all the emotions. There's tension, humour, sadness. The viewers don't miss a thing. That's why we can't either. Nobody knows Melbourne like seven. Hope you're enjoying Saturday Night Replay, probably with a bowl of soup on the lap. Well, we've uh, moved on a few minutes in the third quarter at the MCG. The Bears have added two behinds, both from Brad Hardy, and we pick it up with just under 13 minutes left. Scores level, 3-7 apiece. Under 13 minutes left to three-quarter time. Bears led by 16 points at quarter time, which looked like a cricket score in these conditions. McIver pulled off his kick. So Richmond have had the better of the play, certainly since quarter time. They added one goal three in the second quarter, Richmond. And have kicked two goals straight in this quarter. It's not bad going. McIver loses it to Lees. Merritt over the ball. And the umpire will throw it up again. Best man on the ground, the man in white. He's had 150 possessions. <laughs> <laughs> As we see... The ball thrown up again, as Drew said. Oh, that's a free kick to Merritt. Was dragged round the neck, and the umpire right on the scene. The very good umpiring display. Roger Merritt from 50 metres almost fell over as he kicked it. This could come over the back. No one. Excellent mark. In that last line of defence, I think that was McLeod took that mark. It was a good mark of that wet ball. Here's John Gastev. He's going short to the pocket. Oh, who is that? Waitman putting himself in front. That was excellent play. Waitman will come back and he'll take the free kick. But he showed a lot of courage there in front of Hardy. Dale Waitman, 12th kick. He's had three handballs as well. High to half back. Knocked out of the air by Reynoldson, but he lost some ground. Knights. Oh, he played it beautifully, taken by Poole, in between wing and half forward. Not too sure what to do with it, Trevor Poole, because there's nobody on the forward line. Well, it came out of there so quickly they weren't set for a forward charge. Reigns off the ground. He's kicked back towards the centre. Oh, a vein underneath the ball. Waitman marks. Well, he's winning possessions all over the ground, the Richmond skipper. Playing well in this quarter, Dale Waitman. He's gone to half forward and he's found a man, Peter Wilson. And the... Uh... Reaping the rewards in this quarter by going more directly towards goal down the centre of the ground. 
and Waitman, who has been very good in this quarter, kicking long and direct and uh, catching the Brisbane Bears defenders out. Now, it'll be a miracle if he can make the distance from here with that heavy ball. He won't. It'll land up in the goal square. There are a number of high fives. Here's Tim Powell, a quick kick. And it hit the post. So that is bad luck to Richmond. Very quick thinking by Tim Powell. But they lead. They lead by a point, 3-8 to 3-7. And uh, well, we're in for a titanic struggle for the rest of the game as the rain keeps tumbling down. Kick in by O'Keefe. What a mighty kick, about 50 metres in these conditions. But the good mark by Ryan. And he's played well, Des Ryan. Straight back to the goal square. Chance for the Tigers. Mark! Peter Wilson! Yes, that was a great mark by Peter Wilson. We've seen some tremendous marking in this third quarter. The rain has continued to tumble down. But eyes on the ball and a very greasy ball to mark at that in between the two Brisbane Bears players. Great courage, Peter Wilson. Well, uh, the stats don't look good, but he spent about a quarter and a half on the bench. A vital kick. This to put the Tigers seven points up. Oh, he's hardly scored. He gets a behind, and they lead by two points. Well, they're doing most of the attacking the Tigers, and they seem to be kicking further down that end. So maybe that is the scoring end as the kick again out towards that half back line. Bain off the ground was good play. Reynoldson's there now. Bain, oh geez, working hard, Bain. But was it a free kick? I think it was before that. And it'll be Richmond's way. Now, let's see who it is. It is uh, Lambert, in fact. Lambert right up in front of the Richmond goal. Let's see what they can do. They've had plenty of opportunities. Waitman's had an excellent quarter. He goes in after it close to the line and he takes it over and he's the idol of the Richmond supporters Dale Waitman a great player for Richmond and for Victoria there's the score 3-9 to 3-7 eight and a half minutes of play left in this third quarter Michael Pickering to Trevor Poole Mark Roberts has worked hard gets his boot the ball this is dangerous though because Chris Pim's there Richardson is there and Dale Dixon Richardson can't get away with it Gastev lays on the tackle Justin Pickering, I think that is being caught. And uh, yes, it is. And it's at half forward, centre half forward for the Tigers. Knocked out by McLeod to Michael Pickering. Edge of the goal square. Pickering's kick drops short and it's socket through by Wilson. And he's a very exuberant player, Peter Wilson. He's done a couple of team lifting things in the last five minutes a great mark when he didn't convert but uh, playing on the forward line let's have a look at that again good play by Richmond to get the ball out Pickering a long kick into the forward line they've gone much more direct they haven't fiddled around in this quarter Richmond and uh, good coaching by Kevin Bartlett to get them playing much better and more direct in this quarter Richmond lead by eight points. They're getting on top. They badly need a goal, the Brisbane Bears. It's halfway through that uh, second quarter. Richmond were really, uh, really picked up their game. Is Mark Williams not happy about something? It's at half forward for the Bears. They're making a change, in fact. Coming on is Micken and off is Reynoldson. And uh, what they desperately need now is a quick goal. Since quarter time, Pete, Richmond have kicked four, five to five behinds. Yes, and I think that's been indicative of the general play around the ground. Richmond really have picked up after they were blitzed early by the Bears. There's Merritt. Bain just loses the run of it. That's understandable. Off the ground by Ryan. Bain in after it again. But he's only one against four then. The Bears seem to be standing back a fair bit. There's Ryan playing well. Ryan right down towards half forward a long that ball floated about 50 meters then so it's taken over by Gibson but that ball really carried there might be more wind there than we think Bernie looks like Roger Merritt coming off the ground with an arm injury well Reynoldson had only gone to the bench for about one minute he Ooh. looks in a bad way Roger Merritt too that's a bad loss to the Brisbane Bears out of defense Roberts for the Bears up towards center wing and beat players out of bounds. We have just over six minutes remaining to three-quarter time. 
and it's now an eight-point lead to Richmond after they were blitzed in the first quarter and trailed by 16 points there are actually more spectators here than it looks like there they're all up under shelter because it's rained virtually non-stop since the start Lambert high to half forward Richmond well placed but the ball skims on that wet ground and goes out of play again really Richmond seem to be backing up a lot better when you see a loose ball there's three and four Richmond players there all the time and one Bears man well Richmond aren't a quick side with the likes of Mitchell out and uh, I suppose in these conditions other teams come back to their pace and they'd like it like this umpire's going to throw it up again and I've got that from the coach Kevin Bartlett himself <laughs> said I wonder where you got that from Kevin Bill. Bartlett himself said we're not quick we're in a bit of strife for pace He's going to get this. Oh, good kick on the turn up towards the point of the goal square. Wilson's there again. This might go through for a score. It has for a behind. And we might have a competition at the end of the day. Who kicked it? I have no idea. <laughs> well, again, that floated uh, a long way with the breeze. There's no doubt Richmond have got the scoring in. So the last, last quarter might favour the, the Bears as far as the breeze. Matthew Campbell receives from Mark Roberts. Oh, this is dangerous. The loose ball comes to Lister Smith, to Phillips, to Reynoldson. Well picked up by Reynoldson. Brought to ground. And uh, more like rugby in the clinches there. Micken was grabbed. And the umpire will throw the ball up at half forward. Well, halfway between half forward and centre wing for Richmond. They lead for 10 to 3 7. Only nine points, but that's a fair bit. Jeff Hogg, we've hardly seen him. He must have had a decent spell on the bench, I would think. Jeff Hogg towards half what is that chance again? All the markers dropped. Kicked away by Phillips, or smothered in fact. There's uh, Michael Pickering playing for a free kick then. The umpire didn't pay it. Bain hassled as he kicked it and he puts it out of bounds on the full. So it'll be a kick out there to McKellar. On the mark is Williams. Alan McKellar's been a good player, Drew. Yes, nearly leads the competition uh, in possessions, McKellar, which would surprise a lot of people. Well, what a pickup that was by Powell. Kick smothered. Free, knocked off the ball. In over at McIver, and that will be thrown up again. Peter Wilson last up again for Richmond, and looks as though he's been stung into action by starting the game on the bench because he's come out like uh, well, an enraged lion. Or Tiger more perhaps. Michael Pickering on the turn. Out of bounds on the full. No, he gets a score for that. So all these behinds are worth goals in the conditions and the margin now is nine points, ten points in favour of Richmond. Mark Roberts has uh, lost a lot of weight and a greatly improved player. Good to see him. He's put in a lot of effort into his game, Roberts. And good to see him reaping the benefits. Richardson slipped over. Now, I hope they don't pay a free kick there. Good umpiring again. In fact, he eventually paid it for uh, the Richmond player copping it too high. And it's Trevor Poole right out there in the gloom. Bad luck for Richardson then when he slipped. There's the kick by Poole. It drops short. And it's a mark. Lambert. Craig Lambert is marked. He chipped in short. The ball will always drop under these conditions and he took a very good chest mark yes right on top now richmond too they're playing much more better position play than they did in that first quarter when you consider hardy's kicked three goals three out of the total brisbane score of three goals seven you can see there's not much else on their forward line craig lambert from right in front 25 meters out kicks and goals today's game is part of the carlton and united breweries 1989 premiership season Richmond kicked four goals in that third quarter to turn the game around and Brisbane didn't add to their three goals of the first term. In fact, the last quarter didn't produce a goal for either team and the Tigers ran out winners by 19 points. They had five different goal kickers and Hardy got all three for the Brisbane Bears and would you believe the crowd at the MCG was under 8,000 in the wintry conditions. We'll be back in a moment with the highlights of today's third match. So, what's important to you right now? What do you mean? Well, what do you like doing? Do you like going out? Do you like restaurants? Well, yes. 
Because the easiest thing I can do right now is to write you a cheque for the pool. But it's your money. You have to pay the bank back every month, not me. You're the ones who might have to cut back on the restaurant. Look, Jin and I are both back at work now. And to tell you the truth, uh, the swimming pool's not that important. It's just that it'll give us more time with the kids. And that's much more important than restaurants. At State Bank Victoria, the easiest thing we can ever do is give you a personal loan. The hard part is making sure the loan is right for you. I hope the pool works out. State Bank you. personal you. loans. Thanks. We never forget. It's your money. <laughs> Sorry! You know how it is. It's a bit wet over there. A bit wet over here, too. Let me get some drinks. No, let me. Wait up. Drinks all around. Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. Sorry. I tell you what, mate. It sure beats the hell out of that hack you had working for you. <laughs> Cheaper, too. Carries a ton. Most powerful in its class. You know, at 83 bucks a week, why isn't everyone after one? They are, mate. They are. New Holden Rodeo. At a once only $83 a week, it's cheap labour, but definitely only until June 17. From your Holden dealer. Fax post. Everyone's fax. Come on, that's right. Off you go to sleep, come on. <sighs> There's a new Tats Instant Scratch It game out now. You can win up to $25,000 instantly. Shout yourself a Tats Instant Scratch It. Sports World tomorrow morning begins at 9 o'clock with General Sport and don't forget the football panel at 11 o'clock. A couple of special guests tomorrow, the new Carlton coach Alex Jezelenko and our former panellist Malcolm Blight now carrying all before him coaching Geelong. And also the panellists voting on the State Bank Player of the Year. At the end of the 89 home and away season, the player voted the State Bank Player of the Year by our Sports World panel will receive a State Banking System account worth $10,000. State Bank Victoria, we never forget it's your money. The football tomorrow between 11 and 12. Now Dixie Marshall takes a look at North Melbourne and Fitzroy this afternoon at Prince's Park. For the first time this season, grounds across Melbourne resembled the boggy SCG, but the kangaroos weren't going to wait to take a dive at Prince's Park, the whole team playing mud pies before the start. In a goalless first term, the big possession winner was the boundary umpire and at quarter time, North led six points to four. It was 20 minutes into the second before Phil Cracker registered the only goal for the half after a chess mark in the square. The Lions failed to score and it was North Melbourne by 12 points at the long break. Intending to take more chess marks in the second half, most Fitzroy players opted for long sleeve jumpers. It paid off for Mark Scott, but then the Kangaroos jumped into action, booting two goals within 40 seconds. Dwyer playing soccer. And McRae's long kick beating Backman and making the most of a mudslide. With a 24-point deficit to make up, Fitzroy were never in the hunt. In the last term, Phil Cracker sealed the game for the Ruse, goaling after a mark. In the end, it was Fitzroy getting drowned by 35 points. This is how the ladder looks halfway through the split round, and North Melbourne have moved into the five for the time being, unless Collingwood could win in Perth tomorrow. And tomorrow's match is an important one for the Magpies against the West Coast Eagles in Perth. Live coverage tomorrow at 2 o'clock here on 7. And the two best games of the round are on Monday. Hawthorne and Melbourne, a replay of last year's grand final, and Geelong and Essendon promising to be one of the games of the season, but I hope the MCG looks a bit better on Monday than it did today.
Just a reminder that the replay on Monday night is for a full two hours at 8.30 with those two great games between Melbourne and Hawthorne and Geelong and Essendon. And another reminder about Sports World tomorrow morning, the football content at 11 up until midday at 12 with Jezza and Malcolm Blight. I think we should have a bit of fun tomorrow morning. Hope you've enjoyed the replay tonight. Stay warm and we'll be back with you for more sport on the Seven Network tomorrow morning. Good night to you all. Tonight at 8.30, be watching as Anthony Andrews and Jane Curtin star on a spine-chilling premiere. A wife fears for her life when she suspects her husband of murder. For the first time on television, Suspicion, following MacGyver, tonight on 7. This has been a Seven Sport presentation for the Australian Television Network. The 1989 VFL Premiership season was proudly brought to you by Holden, makers of Commodore Car of the Year. Gillette, the best a man can get. CUB, one of the world's great brewers. BP, on the move. And State Bank, we never forget it's your money. They're back, and Hitler's not very happy. Telly Savalas, Ernest Borgnine, Dirty Dozen for The Fatal Mission, for the first time on television, Sunday.